So tell me who you are and what you do. Okay, my name is Sharona Benheim. I'm an epilepsy surgeon. Um, I am actually a Southern California native. I, I grew up in Los Angeles. I went to undergrad in Northern California at UC Berkeley and the medical school at UC San Diego. And uh, then I decided to brave the East Coast for 10 years. <laughs> I, uh, I went to Mount, first I spent a year at Mass General doing research. And, uh, and then I went to Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City to train. Um, and I did a fellowship in epilepsy surgery at Yale. Um, spent some time as a visiting fellow in Oxford in, in England. Okay. Yeah, with a, um, a man by the name of Tiku Aziz. And now I'm back as an assistant professor at UC San Diego. Um, I am in the functional neurosurgery program and really trying to bring all of the new and exciting technology uh, that's recently come out with epilepsy and epilepsy surgery in particular okay. to San Diego. So tell me about the technology. Do you work with, for example, robots in surgery? <laughs> yeah. We don't. Uh, so Rady, Rady's Children okay. Hospital, um, which is our one of our affiliates, has a robot, has a Rosa robot. Um, we don't have one yet, but we're buying one. Um, and the Rosa robot is a is an excellent piece of equipment. It's very good for a particular kind of surgery called stereo EEG, um, where we place intracranial electrodes in various parts of the brain um, in order to monitor where seizures are coming from in a again a very specific type of patient that you know becomes a candidate uh, for that surgery before they undergo a palliative or a definitive surgical procedure. So the robot is exciting. It's not the only way to do stereo yes. EEG. Okay. Um, there are so, other. So, so, so how do you do that? So I do it with an image guided system called the Brain Lab system. Um, basically, a similar system to the way we do brain biopsies currently um, is the way we place the electrodes. And so it's uh, it's extremely accurate. It uh, has something, you know about a millimeter accuracy, which is fantastic. It's you know it's uh, it's it's uh, it's 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 definitely a cool way of of putting in the electrodes, but the robot is nice because um, it streamlines the process and it makes it go a little bit faster in the operating room, um, and uh, and that's always good. So that's that's why we're purchasing that. So within surgery, you also um, you use MRIs to, to and match them up as well to the to, to other images. Do you work with? Um, so is that is that used to to make it more accurate so you can so you, right. can, so you work with screens and right right absolutely so okay. um, so we use a stereotactic image guided approach and so what that means is uh, so there's many ways to do this the probably most streamlined way that we use um, not only for epilepsy surgery but also for brain tumors um, and for other types of surgery where we need image guidance is um, you know the, the patient undergoes a scan either an MRI or a CT it has to be a specific sequence that has thin cuts and can incorporate uh, parts of the of not only the brain but the face and so then what happens is the patient comes into the operating room we load the sequence up to a stereotactic image guided system and then what we can do after the patient is asleep is match the contours of the face to the to the contours that we see on the MRI and get an accurate localization okay yeah and then use that for navigation which is really cool in the past and sometimes we still need this. In the past, we used to have to do rigid fixation systems where yes. we physically yep. bolt, yep. Um, bolt a, a, a frame to yep. the patient's head. But now, um, that's not always necessary, although it's still necessary in some cases. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so you've spoken here at Adaptive Wednesday 2016. Yes. Um, do you have any interesting questions from the audience? You know, the thing that I...